is Pinnacle. With Tom Cassidy. Pinnacle is brought to you by Data General. Data General, a generation ahead. Sure, I get tired sometimes, and it's not unusual uh, to make a lot of stops in a day and talk to a lot of people in a day. And uh, there's one thing that we have ever had to justify in Mesa program is the use of jet airplanes, because I stretch my people far, and, uh, and we do use the equipment a lot. Uh, we, uh, uh, we only have 700 employees at Mesa, and it's, uh, so it's, you know, we make good use of, uh, of those airplanes. T. Boone Pickens and his reputation may be larger than life, but down to earth is the way he describes himself. He's a storybook Texas oil man who uses a corporate jet instead of a stallion, and he leaves his mark with a financial know-how instead of a six-shooter. His best-known success has been in the name of stockholders during the recent wave of takeovers in the U.S. oil industry. In fact, he is frequently a central figure, most recently in the battle for control of Gulf oil. As founder and chairman of Mesa Petroleum, this 56-year-old has developed a base of power far larger than the country's 92nd biggest oil company. But it's Mesa and its 700 employees he's proudest of. He says they're well taken care of, even highly paid, and he promises they're made to earn every penny. It's uh, probably the best place in Amarillo you can work. Located at corporate headquarters in Amarillo, Texas, is Mesa's Fitness Center, complete with racquetball courts, weightlifting equipment, employee progress charts, even the gym clothes are provided. This statue of Pickens was a surprise. His employees commissioned it for the fitness center as a bigger-than-life reminder of how much their leader means to them. Mesa's commitment to fitness is based on Pickens' belief that it improves worker productivity. A vigorous game of racquetball, he feels, can absolutely make the difference in getting through a long day. He even believes that in the heat of battle for Gulf Oil, his employees' fitness made the difference. Those who worked on the Gulf deal know very well the pace that we all kept. And I truly believe that if it hadn't been for the good physical and mental condition of our people at that time, we would not have been nearly as successful as we were. Oklahoma born, Pickens moved to Amarillo as a teenager, then came back to graduate from what became Oklahoma State. He took a degree in geology, went to work for Phyllis Petroleum, but quit two years later. And in 1955, set out with $1,300 in his pocket to build the Pickens legend. In gratitude for the start it gave him, the university's 21st Century Center will soon be the endowed home of the T. Boone Pickens School of Geology. And in this edition of Pinnacle, you'll meet T. Boone Pickens, a life-sized descendant of Daniel Boone, who seldom flinches under pressure. He'll talk like a missionary for capitalism about the interests of America's little shareholder. Boone Pickens is next on Pinnacle. Phelps, I'm meeting with the board. Board? On that report I sent you. Report? There are your comments. Comments? On that report. What report? Nice. While your competitors are prisoners of their inbox, you can be a generation ahead of them. Data General CEO system can automate your office to send and receive critical information by computer. And Data General systems are so compatible they can even link up with the leading mainframe to keep you a generation ahead of your competitors. Data General. A generation ahead. Boone Pickens' success did not happen overnight. For 30 years, he has spent long hours learning powerful lessons on how to make efficiency pay off. I'm convinced, of course, that there are more than 24 hours in a day. And uh, I think that, in fact, you can put a week in a day if you're that well organized you can communicate that well. I also have seen people that, uh, fortunately, I don't have any of them working for me, that it takes them, uh, uh, they can't get a day in a week uh, because they're not organized and they, uh, they you know, uh, plumber around and they're just not able to, uh, to get the job done. So it's, uh, we, we press for this at Mesa. What is your idea of a successful work day? Uh, Tom, is, as you know, I'm, I consider myself very well organized. And I consider myself to be a good communicator. And uh, I think of my day usually uh, uh, what I haven't done the night before to prepare the, for the day the ne next day. I'll uh, finish it off in the shower is where I usually, it, it all comes together while I'm showering. Sometimes I take 20 minute showers. And then I try to, uh, I try to knock out what I've, uh, what I've planned to do during that day and whatever comes up, we'll go ahead and process that also as the day unfolds. But uh, it's, you know, it's, you want to you you have a full day and, and you want to feel good about it when the day ends. Well, let's talk about that political relationship that you have to have with shareholders, employees, your colleagues at top management. 
Um, how do you approach that? I think just like most of our other relationships, it's very, it's very straightforward. I do a, a one and a half hour orientation for all new Mesa employees. And it takes some time to get this done because it isn't on a set schedule. It may, there may be several months pass before those people are brought together after they've come to work. And I meet with them. But the first point and the last point of the meeting is that, uh, that the stockholders own this company. The stockholders are number one here and the employees are number two. Now, I don't think anybody will ever uh, fault me for taking care of employees. I mean, they've been taken care of very well at Mesa. We have uh, excellent benefits, and uh, there have been many people at Mesa that have retired and have been worth a lot of money because they deserved it. They worked hard, and they deserve it. Uh, they made a contribution, and they were paid for it. But it's still the owners of the company are the stockholders. And I make that very clear to our, our people. If you, if you came in our headquarters office, you'll find a, uh, an attitude, uh, demeanor on the part of our people that, uh, that'll surprise you if, in comparison to maybe some other companies. Uh, I mean, they move quickly and uh, they're paid to put in an eight hour day and they understand that they will put in an eight hour day. We make it very clear to them that you look like act like and work like a professional, you'll be paid like one. And if you don't, you won't be here very long. And it's, uh, and they love it. I really believe they love it. Back in the early days when Boone Pickens worked at Phyllis Petroleum as a geologist, his enterprising ways and outspoken spirit sometimes made things difficult for him. I had a problem with uh, uh, asking about why certain things were done and I was told that that wasn't, uh, uh, that really wasn't a concern of mine and that I had a job to do and I need to get at it. And there was some there was some good advice there. I think I was uh, uh, I asked some questions I probably shouldn't have asked and commented about some things I shouldn't have commented about. And so you learn on every job. And uh, I did it, Phillips. And uh, I came to them and asked them for a job. Uh, they were good enough to hire me. Uh, I gave them uh, a good four years. I worked hard, and uh, I had no regrets there. But, uh, but there must have Phillips wasn't the place for me. One place Boone Pickens did fit was in the fight for Gulf oil, triggering the largest and most controversial proxy battle in U.S. corporate history. I may have gotten more satisfaction out of the point that there were 400,000 stockholders at Gulf oil that were in a dead-end street, and uh, that, that we did. And I know this starts to take, have overtones of a crusade. And uh, it's, uh, I had a fellow tell me one time, said a crusader Pickens never makes money. I said, I don't want to be one. But nonetheless, there were 400,000 stockholders here at Gulf Oil that were in a dead-end street that came out making $6.5 billion. Uh, we happened to be one of the stockholders and the largest, and we made $500 million out of it. I wasn't even aware of the conclusion of, of the deal. It was handled through our financial people. And I was, I was kept informed, but I had no, no part in but those. But there were no champagne glasses raised? or None at all. Boone Pickens, some say, is a crusader for free enterprise, championing the cause of shareholders, even when it sometimes makes life difficult for me. Corporate America needs a, a, a real uh, flushing in some cases. I think that uh, managements of, of certain companies uh, are convinced that they're the owners of those companies. That's not so. The stockholders are the owners. Uh, it's incredible to me how little ownership some of the managers of the companies that they own. It's incredible to me to pick up a proxy statement and see where directors, some directors have zero ownership, yet they profess to, uh, to represent the stockholder's viewpoint. I don't believe that's so. I think that, that America is built on the free enterprise system. I've lived in one foreign country, and they aren't even in a class with America. Canada. But there's not, a, yes, I've lived in Canada. But there, there, there isn't any place in the world that's in a class with America. And we have a, we have a president today, Ronald Reagan, that, that believes in those principles in the free enterprise system. It's what made America great. And we don't want to lose it. When Pinnacle returns, Boone Pickens talks about his drive, his confidence, and this corporate dynamo remembers the days when he was an underachiever in life. We need another set of drawings. I just did a set. We changed something. But we just changed you it. You have to change the change. I just changed the change. You have to change the change that you changed. But I already While changed your the change. competitors are still trapped doing things the old way, you can be a generation ahead of them. With Data General's computer-based engineering systems, you can design and test prototypes by computer. 
and data general systems are so compatible they can even link up with the leading mainframe to keep you a generation ahead of your competitors. Data general. A generation ahead. Scope presents the way it was. Mama, mouthwash tastes like medicine. Oh, baby, if it didn't, it wouldn't work. Alex believed it. Today, he still does. Hey, Big Al, hmm? if you're going dancing, try Scope. It's minty, tastes good. Then it doesn't fight bad breath. Hey, Scope works. Don't let the good taste fool you. Ah, cool, tingly. Fresh breath that laughs. Mama won't believe it. Mama! <laughs> Scope works. Don't let the good taste fool you. Another class? When the boys at the frat house throw a party. How long have these been laying around? Last weekend? <laughs> it's a lost cause. I remember those. Now's the time for Cascade. It cuts right through dried on food. And while most detergents can leave drops that spot, Cascade cheating action leaves glasses virtually spotless. We did it! <laughs> I didn't know you guys had such a spotless reputation. Yeah. For virtually spotless dishes, Cascade doesn't just clean. It goes all the way to clear. Inventory. Inventory. While your competitor's inventory is out of control, you can be a generation ahead of them. With Data General's desktop generation computers, you can take control of your business, including your inventory. And Data General systems can grow with your business to keep you a generation ahead of your competitors. Data General. A generation ahead. The battle for the takeover of Gulf Oil is what made Boone Pickens' name a household term in many parts of America. Eventually, Standard Oil of California won control of Gulf. But not before Boone Pickens and many other shareholders in this country had made billions of dollars. Some shareholders consider T. Boone Pickens a Robin Hood, but he does not. You know, when I see Robin Hood, it was as uh, uh, I see a person that takes it, I believe, from the rich and gives it to the poor. Well, I'm certainly not uh, trying to take anything away from anybody and give it to anybody. That's totally against my, uh, you know, my philosophy as a free enterpriser. I believe you work for everything you get. And uh, I believe that everybody should get a fair shake for the money they put up. And that then makes me fall into a, a uh, you know, a category where I line up, I suppose, with the little guy. Because I think the little guy frequently is left out. And I don't like to see that. Boone, in terms of what makes you run, motivation, you're 30 years into this game now, come next year, on your own. Why do you keep being... It must be the, the competition of it all, but there's a part in there that, that, uh, that has, has been there for a long time in my life, and that is, is that uh, I, I somehow ago from the start, when we went public in 1964, I uh, uh, actually running a... Uh, a public owned company and I've had people say my gosh said there's nothing private about your life you can't you know you've got proxy material and you got disclosures all the time and things like this that's never bothered me when you first struck out on your own I think in 1955 uh, took you 13 thirteen hundred dollars life savings you buy a station wagon um, you end up later borrowing 2500 to set up your own company ever any doubts that you were going to make it Probably not, Tom. I, I haven't uh, suffered with a lack of confidence. And uh, I came from, from probably the most ideal background to develop that confidence in uh, a boy as he grew up and, and to a young man. But uh, I, had, I had great uh, uh, encouragement from my father, my mother, and my grandmother and aunt lived next door to me. And I was an only child. And uh, it was, uh, I was expected to work, but all, all the family worked. And uh, it was just, uh, it was just always, uh, it was just uh, an ideal atmosphere when I look back on it, that uh, we were not a poor family, uh, we were not a wealthy family, we came from moderate circumstances, and, uh, but everybody understood that they would, they would always work. And my, my first job came as a, uh, uh, delivering newspapers in the sixth grade. <coughs> so it was, uh, from there on, I mean, it, and it was always considered to be a, uh, you know, a privilege, and, and really you got a great deal of pleasure out of working. Was there a time in your life when you really were an underachiever, given that most people consider you an overachiever now? Tom, uh, uh, very definitely. When, when I, you know, I go back to the, my aunt 
taught me in the fifth and sixth grade at Central Grade School in Holdenville, Oklahoma. She continually told my mother that said, uh, uh, this guy is, uh, he's coasting and uh, he's, uh, he's just not playing up to his potential, which I have used that back to my own children. And I have five children and, and uh, three stepdaughters. But I've played that back to, to my children all the way. If, if a C is the best we can do uh, on your grade, well then let's get the C and we'll all be happy with it. But if you're getting C's and you should be getting B's, uh, that won't wash. And that I had in my Aunt Ethel was the one that pressed that harder than anybody else, that uh, this guy's not playing up. And uh, she just, uh, she was uh, a really, frankly, a pain in the neck to me when I was in about the fifth or sixth grade because I could never satisfy her as to, as to what I was doing uh, in grade school where she was watching me very close, not only in her classes, but she was also keeping up with, with other classes, you know. Ahead on Pinnacle, Boone Pickens plays racquetball, and you'll visit his 40,000-acre ranch. Stay tuned. Phelps, I'm meeting with the board. Board? On that report I sent you. Report? There are your comments. Comments? On that report. What report? Why, while your competitors are prisoners of their inbox, you can be a generation ahead of them. Data General's CEO system can automate your office to send and receive critical information by computer. And Data General systems are so compatible they can even link up with the leading mainframe to keep you a generation ahead of your competitors. Data General. A generation ahead. The financial world. Here you need a Payneweber broker to guide you. Because investing is like being on the receiving end of a Jimmy Connors serve. Payneweber will coach your every move to help you turn the unpredictable to your advantage. At Payne Weber, we believe that the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your investments. Well played, Bob. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you, Payne Weber. What do I have to do? Open up a Payne Weber account? In addition to working harder than the other guy, Boone Pickens says the secret to his success, believe it or not, is physical exercise. Competitive edge, sharp. My wife says that uh, every two or three days, she said that you uh, have to go buy a gymnasium if you just walk through there and and uh, get the gymnasium motor, and I said that's about right. But it's part of my life, and and I think that it's. Uh, see, I don't want, and, and I make it very clear to people at Mesa. If you come with uh, with Mesa, and you work uh, work out to retirement, you'll leave with a lot of money. I'm talking about all of them will, whether they're uh, at whatever level in the company, they will leave with a very good retirement. Unusual, in fact. And but I say, why work? for 30 or 40, find yourself not able to enjoy what you have made over those years. You've got to stay well. You've got to be healthy. Uh, and so we, we drive for that. And consequently, uh, we have been very, very successful at it. What does that wellness program um, that's administered really through the fitness center do to the instincts? For instance, how important is it for you to play handball? Does that keep you hungry? Does that keep your instincts sharp? Oh, absolutely. Tom, I, I, can, I can promise you that if I'm, for instance, if I've got a very, very uh, uh, long day, for instance, it might start at the office. Now, I don't do this every morning, you understand, but I'm, I, this, this does happen. But it would, and the other day it did happen, but it started at 6.30, and I was going to end up on the West Coast uh, for a dinner meeting that night, and of course we have a two-hour time difference, which is an advantage or a disadvantage, however you want to look at it. But I had to, I could see that when I was going to, when I was going to get to bed on the West Coast, it was going to be 2 o'clock in the morning on the, on the Amarillo clock. And I had to work out before I went to the West Coast, or I would have been so dull. And what I did, I, I picked out a very, very tough racquetball match uh, for 4.15 in the afternoon and played that match. I was wrung out when I got through. I mean, if I had to do something immediately after finishing, I would have uh, I would have not done a very good job of it. Two hours later, entirely different, though. But I took that shower and uh, and got on that airplane. I laid back for about 30 or 45 minutes. And, you know, it's a two-hour trip to the West Coast out of Amarillo. And so we were there. We were there for dinner. And I mean, at midnight, I felt, I felt very refreshed. And, and I know exactly what it was. It was the fact that I did take that, that very... Uh, 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 intense exercise for about an hour. I know it makes a difference, and I don't think it's mental either. Despite Boone's business and financial success, he feels some things in life are more important. I consider my personal life to be even more successful than my business life. So I've 
You know, I, I'm very, I feel, I'm a very fortunate person to have had the kind of life that I have had. And uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's there, and, and you know, I, I like all parts of it. And one part of Boone's life is his ranch. It's called 2B for Boone and Beatrice, his wife. Boone first took his wife to see that ranch when they were married 10 years ago. She came up there and she said, this is the greatest place I've ever seen. I laughed. I said, you got to be kidding. I said, we have no grass. I said, we practically don't have any quail left. We have no fences. I said, she said, oh, she said, just, just give me a chance. And she said, I will turn this into a real hunting paradise. And she said, I'll restore the pastures. She said, this, this will be a magnificent place. Well, we, that's right. That's exactly what happened. And uh, So she made this your home? Oh, well, this isn't our home. Of course, our home is in Amarillo, but the, uh, she made a home out of it. But whatever she had, and I, I hope you have the opportunity to send it, but you'll see what I'm talking about. But, I mean, we have no elaborate ranch house there. Uh, we have a, a double-wide uh, 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 prefabricated home there, but it's a real home. And uh, but she's grown trees, she has bushes, she's got flowers, she grew quail, she fixed the fences, she uh, did all these things, built a barn, uh, moved a ranch manager in, we have nine employees in there, and we expanded the size of the ranch to about three times what it was. With all of his wealth and success, Boone promises his feet are still on the ground. His sense of priorities, he says, came from his mother, grandmother, and aunt. I think that when I reflect back on it, that, uh, that these women were so interested in me uh, as a boy growing up, and they saw that, that I had an opportunity to uh, achieve and do the things that, that uh, I was capable of doing, and they just uh, they kept the pressure on all the time. Plus, one thing that they, they all three, my mother and grandmother in particular, always uh, were, were so clear about and kept it up front all the time is to do things in moderation. Uh, don't drink too much, don't eat too much, don't go overboard uh, on religion, don't, uh, I mean, we're, we're all Christians in the family, but we don't go around uh, pressing that uh, to people. And uh, we, it just, that's just the way I was, uh, was brought up. Don't, uh, you know, athletics are fine, but don't make them your whole life. And, uh, you know, it just it was always that pressure to keep things in, in proper perspective. As a high school basketball player, you had considerable success. You were also known as a heck of a prankster. For instance, dropping water bags out of hotel windows. I, I had, <laughs> I did that, yes. Uh, it was at a certain period of my time. I don't do it anymore. I haven't dropped a water bag in a long time. <laughs> there is someone Wall Street Boone that would disagree with you. <laughs> well, <I> <laughs> We need another set of drawings. I just did a set. We changed something. Can we just change it? You have to change the change. I just changed the change. You have to change the change that you changed. But I already While changed your the change. competitors are still trapped doing things the old way, you can be a generation ahead of them. With Data General's computer-based engineering systems, you can design and test prototypes by computer. And Data General systems are so compatible, they can even link up with the leading mainframe to keep you a generation ahead of your competitors. Data General. A generation ahead. Well, my last question. Regardless of all your jetting around the country, um, however busy you may be, what are you most excited about in your life today? It's, it, it's, been, a, uh, it's been an absolute uh, uh, ball my whole life has. I, I can't wait till the next page turns and to see what that might be. Now, you probably feel like I may know what's on the next page. I really don't at this point. And uh, so it's, you know, what's the most exciting? If, uh, if I'm in a deal, it's the most si exciting. If I go to the 2B Ranch, it's most exciting. If it's um, playing a racquetball game, it's most exciting. Everything that I do is, uh, it seems like it's fun. And I can't, I, I'd be foolish to tell you that every day is all fun. It's not. There's some things that I, that I don't like about each day, probably. But uh, I don't think anybody ever told us it was all going to be perfect here. Transcript 
bucks and three dollars to Pinnacle Transcript. Cable News Network, 1050 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. Pinnacle is brought to you by Data General. Data General, a generation ahead. This program is a presentation of CNN Business News.